Hi, this is Tom McElroy at wildsurvivalskills.com. In this video, I'm going to show you a new variation on an old Polynesian fire making technique known as the fire plow. So as far as primitive fire making is concerned, fire plow conceptually is the easiest. It's literally rubbing one stick against the other. All right, now while fire plow is a great technique when you're in the middle of Polynesia somewhere on an island, or you're out in the desert where it's incredibly dry and fire making comes easy. Out here in Northern California, when it's been raining for the past four days, fire plow is pretty much unheard of. So due to the fact that we're all locked in because of coronavirus, I figured I'd get out in the woods and see if I could challenge myself to find a way to make fire plow more reliable in an environment like this. All right, now when you're out in a Polynesian island or out in the desert, you can use plants like sodal in the desert or century plant or out in the islands, sea hibiscus. The closest thing I have to that in this area is a tree called buckeye. Now, buckeye doesn't have the same amazing properties that sea hibiscus does or sodal does, but in this area, it's the closest I can find. So what I'm going to do is just to try to find the driest dead branch possible, something that feels unusually light so that when you pick it up, It looks heavier than it actually feels, and when you pick it up, you're almost surprised at how light it is. A piece about this big around, maybe about two inches around, and it has a section that's nice and straight. All right, the first thing you need to do is you're going to find a maybe a foot and a half long section. It could probably even be smaller. It's mostly just the fact that the longer it is, the more you can kind of put your knee on it or sit on it. So I'm going to take this section, and I'm going to flatten out. Find a nice straight section, flatten the top and the bottom. Now as you're carving this, you should just check and make sure this is bone dry. If it's not perfectly dry, it's not going to work. All right, now when I'm making this top piece, I want to carve away some of this roundness so it's a little bit more like a chisel shape with a beveled edge this way but totally flat on bottom. So this part here won't dig in too much and it'll cause a lot of friction. Okay, that's about it. So once I've got this piece just tapered down slightly, I can start rubbing it against the other board. The last thing I also did was put a little bit of a track in this piece of wood so that when I'm rubbing this top piece against it, it stays in that track and develops heat. Okay, here we go. I've already got it partially burned in because I just sit there and I warm it up for a while. Just back and forth, back and forth. Get this track right here so it's very flat on bottom. You don't want that V-ing because as it V's, just makes it harder as you go and you dig your way into that V. The stick gets tighter and tighter in there and causes too much pressure against the sides of your uh, top stick. So, got my foot on it, feels all right. And now I just want to warm it up. Let's take it nice and slow. Now I can do this for a while. So I don't want to burn myself out. So I'm just gonna do it nice and easy. Make sure I'm breathing really good. And just watch that notch at the end. Watch that dust start to collect. Nice long strokes, nothing crazy. You wanna save that burst speed until the end. Okay, now that I feel like I've got a decent amount of dust. Power through. That little burst at the end. Whew. Okay, there you have it. You can see this pile is still smoking ever so slightly. No! Okay, very close. All right, I'm going for take two. All right, you can see all the different attempts I've made. 
of different pieces of wood from different buckeye trees, and none of them seemed to get hot enough to light. It wasn't until just at the very end that I got really lucky and stumbled upon the perfect combination of wood. I was really close to quitting, and in desperation I looked around and saw a wildflower stalk of horseweed and decided to give it a go. Look at that. It worked. Woo Look at that. Just a little horsetail stock. Oh man. That is so much easier than anything else I've ever done up here. That is a first. Oh, I can't believe it. That's exciting. Okay. So you can see it's lit. The wind's blowing it, but it's blowing it right up to the channel into the rest of the dust. Oh man, you know how many times I tried with other branches of buckeye and harder woods out here and I never thought to use a flower stalk like this, but that just works so much better than anything else I've done. I've never even thought about doing that and it just dawned on me like 10 minutes ago. Uh, absolutely fantastic. I'm really, really happy with that. So what I got here is I got redwood bark and then I got usnea, which is a uh, a lichen that grows on the trees around here and I took it off. It's super dry um, And redwood will get it going in the second it catches this usnea. Hopefully it'll light up real nice Super careful Okay Dump that right into there Super careful not to mess it up It's really jammed in there tiny little coal so hopefully this tinder is gonna be good there you go, you can see it right there. we go. This thing is a little wet, I guess. But man, that is a uh, horseweed on buckeye fire plow. Something I've never seen or even heard of before. So definitely start giving it a shot. It's, it's something to look into. All right, well, that video admittedly didn't go exactly how I was planning from the beginning. I'm thrilled that I was able to learn something new by mixing and matching and trying different woods. Hopefully at this point, I found a way to make fire plow just a little bit more reliable in an environment like this. If you liked that video, please hit the like button, subscribe, check out my other videos, and stay tuned because I should have a bunch more coming out soon.